Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so Theresa May is um, she's doing a big push now to get uh, the public and the parliamentary support behind her withdrawal agreement. And we thought we'd try and shine some light on why almost everyone hates it, regardless of whether you're a Lever or a Remain. And I'm really pleased to say that I'm joined by Joel Buckus. Um, he's a commentator and he's contributed to In Facts and he has an understanding of the legal side of Brexit. And he's um, he's had the pleasure of skimming over the 585 pages contained in the withdrawal agreement. So, um, oh. um, what is the withdrawal agreement? OK, the withdrawal agreement is the form of which we leave the EU without falling off a cliff. So imagine here we are, we're walking and without the withdrawal agreement, legal uncertainty, there we are. The withdrawal agreement just helps us for a bit longer before we actually reach that cliff edge again in, if those issues aren't sorted out. Yeah, now, I, I understand it, it kind of, it's, it's really, it covers three main areas, doesn't it? It covers citizens' rights, I think. It covers citizens' rights, yeah, it's, the, the idea is that everything is meant to, the, the, everything is meant to stay the same um, for the transition while they try and work something out. Um, yeah. By to what? What by the thirtieth of December, twenty twenty, isn't it? Yeah. So everything and, uh, should just stay the same up until the end of the withdrawal agreement. We up until the end, unless last... unless unless it's extended. Yeah. Now, my it can be extended once. Yes, with agreement from with agreement as well. So if they, I think it's before it's July twenty nine, July twenty nineteen. We can put in a request, well, the, the UK government can put in a request and um, yeah. then they'll say we need th we need to extend this and then a new date will be set, which is why if you go to, what is it, uh, Article 126, I think it is, um, or 132, I always forget which one it is, there's a nice blank bit or two X's in the box that's saying 20 whatever, so as yeah. long as it gets agreed, big... they can extend it for as long as they want, maybe. Yeah. Right out to the end of the century if they want to. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, hopefully that way we can keep our EU citizenship. <laughs> um, it also covers the financial settlement, and but in particular, bone of contention is the Irish border questions, yeah. and, and uh, this is where the the backstop comes in. This is something that um, everybody's probably heard about. But um, could you say explain a little bit about what the backstop is, what it means? Okay, the backstop is um, in case it's it's to, so the point is to avoid the uh, hard border in the event that the UK and the EU do not come to an arrangement at the end of the uh, transition period. Yeah. So it's that it's that it's that simple. It's it kicks in if there's nothing sorted out. Yeah, and the the, the reason it's so contentious is because. Well, firstly, you've got the uh, the DUP. They hate it because they absolutely hate it. <laughs> they hate it because it keeps um, Northern Ireland. If we entered into the backstop phase, it would keep Northern Ireland in uh, the kind, basically, in the single market, whereas the yeah. remain part of the um, United Kingdom would would stay in the customs union. And that's the that's the bit that the DUP hate is because it it essentially separates them from the rest of the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's their. Mentioned. That's the reality. Um, of, that's the reality that no one decided to discuss during um, in 2016. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it's, these, these things are all kind of coming out of the woodwork. Now. Um, yeah, it would have been helpful if um, they would have told us about this. You know, well, at least made it clear. <laughs> Project Fear. Yeah, Project Fear. Yeah, Ooh, I, remember, Project I remember being. I remember being back at being back at university, where we joked. We were in our EU law modules. And we joked about Article 50. Oh, it's never going to happen. Oh, what is it? What is Article 50? And now, oh yeah. God. And now yeah. we've now we found out. The, now we're finding out, finding out the hard way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's actually going to be quite interesting. And in, in, um, I think on the seventh of December, the ECJ starts um, starts yeah, the process of deciding whether um, Article 50 can actually be unilaterally rescinded. Um, no, that could be. A bit that's um, that's tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, that's really? Whiteman and Wilson. I think Wilson's the one. Um, Wilson is the one that's um, on the seventh of December, which discusses the constitutional requirements and illegality. 
Oh, so I'm right. I get the two confused actually. So yeah, yeah, I, I always get them confused. Yeah, so the seventh of December is the one um, where it's related to the um, corruption during the referendum. Yes, that, is that whether it can be voided? Yeah, in the that high one. Court. I've I've written I've written now. Um, I, let me just get my. I've got some notes on that one, which is. You are right. Actually, I the dates now. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. You right. Yeah, you are. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, good. Right. Yeah. So I think um, the, yeah, the Wilson one is about um, whether illegality can be part of the constitutional requirements to leave the EU. Um, yeah. And I think it's plainly obvious that illegality, corruption, all that can't be part of your constitutional requirements. Yeah. Um, and I believe they base that off the, uh, I can't remember, the, uh, um, the, representation, the Representation of the People Act, uh, right. 1983 or something. Yeah, um, which talks of, which is where 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 egalities like took place, and they had to stop the vote or whatever. I can't remember exactly, but um, yeah. yeah. So how that relates is how that relates. The EU referendum act 2015 um, made it part of our constitutional requirement to 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 leave the EU. So that's that's what changed our constitution, and they're asking. Is the illegality that took that took place part of that constitutional requirement? Yes. No, if it, if it is if it's not part of it, there's no way we could be leaving in accordance with our constitutional requirements. Yeah. 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 Which is going to be very interesting to find out actually. And it's so so it's tomorrow the ECJ ECJ are going to start deliberating with regards to whether we can unilaterally rescind Article Fifty. Yeah. Tomorrow. Whiteman has been heard at um, uh, at the ECJ, and they're yeah. um, um, where are they? I've got some notes about it. They are looking at things like well, the, the points they the points they raise are things like the voluntary act of withdrawal. It can, it's not um, it's we don't you know we we don't we're not made to do it. We we have we it's like a, a it's like displaying our sovereignty. So yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's a nice, nice, simple display of sovereignty, which means you know we never had, you know, we never lost our sovereignty. Yeah, yeah. I did a nice. Yeah. I think I did a Twitter. Po I did a Twitter post about it um, today. Oh no, yesterday. Um, yeah. Oh, it's got over two hundred retweets, so it's doing quite well. <laughs> Excellent. I'll include your um, your Twitter handle in um, in the notes of this video, actually, so people can contact you directly. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah. Okay, so so anyway, we're we're digressing a bit, aren't we? Let's get back to the withdrawal agreement and why everybody hates the withdrawal agreement. Pretty much everyone, anyway, apart from Theresa May. I think she loves it, but everyone else hates it. I don't um, think she does love it. <laughs> so we've kind of touched on the whole sovereignty issue with regards to um, Northern Ireland. Of course, Gibraltar's now come into play as well. Um, oh, Spain. <laughs> so we're seeing with. Um, with this, the effect of this um, withdrawal agreement, it means that Spain are now going to be able to use leverage over uh, the British government regarding uh, Gibraltarian sovereignty, if that's the right yeah. way to phrase it. Um, which again, it seems that we are now we're ceding sovereignty. Um, it, it's happening all over now. You know, we have Northern Ireland. It's happening in. It's happening in Gibraltar now. Um, is there, you know, how, how does how do you what do you think about that? Is that would you say well, it's a fair assessment? Yeah, it's it's. I've never seen. I've. Ne I, I can't. But I, it's it's so weird. You you can't. I can't even comprehend it. Sometimes there are, we actually we're giving up all our representation in the EU. So that's you know ECJ judge, uh, MEPs, commissioners, everything. All this just yeah. to um just apparent to apparently take back control. It doesn't yeah. make much sense when you think about it. Yeah, we seem to be losing control that we apparently had already lost, but now um, that they're complaining, we're losing it again, which is, you know. We're going to have zero representation in the biggest single market in the world, where we're probably one of the biggest leaders and we hold, like, what was it, about 10% of the voting rights in the EU yeah, parliament. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, then yeah. that, and then that's to Nadine Doris's, um, to, uh, to her shock. She's like, oh, it's a terrible deal. We're gonna we're gonna lose all our MEP MEPs. Well, um, you did yeah. advocate leaving the European Union and leaving all its institutions. Yeah, it's a bit like Dominic Rab realizing you, that you a, cannot make it up. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Um, so going back to the uh, the backstop, um, 
Now, we can't unilaterally withdraw from this, can we? Well, as we all know, Parliament is supreme. Yeah. But in reality, we follow the rule of law. We've signed an agreement. Well, we haven't signed, you know, we haven't signed it yet, but, you yeah. know, we can't... <laughs> If we're following the rule of law, which means we're going to honour that agreement, which means we're not going to, you know, ignore it, which means, yeah, we can't unilaterally just stop it. We have to have yeah. the agreement of of the other side. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we could, like you said, if we we could um, we could forget about the law and just yeah. do it unilaterally. But then we and, would suffer all the consequences of the international community community and how they that yeah, would it um, wouldn't it wouldn't look good if we're trying to do all these if we want to do these all these other agreements with other countries and they could see us not even being able to honour our own. Yeah. Yeah. And it wouldn't resolve the Irish border issue either. Yeah. So, I mean if the I mean yeah. if the Republic if the if Northern Ireland wanted to become into wanted to reunite with them yeah. um, with the Republic, I mean that's problem solved. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. I, I actually think some um, some proponents of Brexit actually now want this to happen. It <laughs> almost seems some of the conversations I I've heard, some of the um, comments that I've read, people seem to be so desperate for their Brexit, they're even prepared to countenance the it, dissolution of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. You know, it's and, become a religion which, now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, I think it, is. it doesn't matter what the facts are, what the reality is, as long as you believe. Um, you know, then you're still going to think it's a, then you still you know you still think it's going to be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Unfortunately, are you are you, uh, are you aware of any? Is there any precedent that you're aware of? Um, anything like this? In have you ever seen any, any legal case study or international um, thing that's happened like this before? Well, in this instance specifically, where sovereignty has been, well, control, sovereignty, whatever you want to call it, is being ceded to something that's not a country. Because everyone seems, yeah. lots of people seem to think that the EU is a super state. It's not. It's just a political union. It's not a country. It's not doing anything. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Weird. I mean, we all, we all, lots of countries make compromises to join things, but they all want to have a say in it as well. Whereas we're going to still be giving this control over with zero say. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And it seems like the rest of the world seems to be gravitating towards blocks, whereas we seem to be attempting to do something that everywhere else in the world isn't, you know, <laughs> it's going against everything. Just setting sail in a dinghy boat. Yeah, no, it's With a few absolutely holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, how, how do you see this go? How do you, in, in your opinion, how do you see this playing out in Parliament and how do you see this uh, well, progress? If we've been looking at the news today, um, a people's vote is becoming a lot more, uh, it's getting a lot more prominent. I mean, just think about six months ago or, you know, what, eight or six months ago, um, it was quite a, you know, it's quite a laughable thing, People, you know, people were saying, but now it's actually becoming quite a big force. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't go through Parliament, then it looks like it's going to have to be either a people's vote because the only way they go sort out this stalemate is by giving it back to us yeah or we crash with no deal yeah there's no it just seems uh, i mean i'd be really surprised if it does go through parliament i mean she's you know she, she, she managed she's managed to get through things through parliament before as we've seen that you know just at a, at a you know like with a few extra votes but um yeah ideally we don't want it to go through parliament and then we want that people's vote to come yeah, and if that yeah. people's vote comes, it says then what's go what's the question going to be? I mean, if we have, if we have three options, one being remain, the other one being her deal, and the other one being no deal, we should smash it because we could split them up. But if we want to win yeah. it fairly, um, if we want to win it fairly, <laughs> I think that's a, the thing. I think the thing with the people's vote, it needs to be seen to be fair to yeah. um, to all sides. I mean, yeah. I. I I currently, my current way of thinking is that you have a three question referendum with a transferable vote, um, either that or a two stage referendum, either either way. Can yeah. work for me. That said, I mean, I think there's an argument um, and I've, I've said this before, actually, I think there's an argument that if Parliament rejects Theresa May's deal, then uh, the will of the people is expressed through our rep representatives in Parliament. Therefore, they will have made a view on the deal, therefore, maybe that then should not be on the table anyway. Maybe it should literally be uh, leave no deal 
remain. Um, I'm, 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 I keep changing. I keep changing on this one. Oh, no, I, used moment, quite, I used to be quite against the people's vote because I was like, I was really worried. Like, you know, when people were still saying, um, of oh, we don't control our borders and you know it was getting quite you know quite on people are still saying that but now i actually I, I really think there needs to be another people's vote because um it looks like the people know a lot more about brexit than you know dominic raab who thankfully isn't in a brexit cetera anymore <laughs> i haven't quite understood the full extent of it <laughs> um you um you meet quite a lot of people don't you because you, you're quite um you're quite involved in the campaign um, against Brexit and for a people's vote. Yeah. And um, not that I'm saying you're biased, I'm, I'm, your opinions are, are your best. You yeah, know, I try and, I try and do I, So I work full time, so it's hard to be completely. completely of course, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm up to date with all. Have you noticed that when you talk to people on the street that you're, you're seeing a change in their opinions towards uh, Brexit and towards uh, maybe another referendum? There is. Sense- there's, Definitely a huge. I was out doing, um, I think a couple of months ago now, out doing the uh, Brexometer thing. Yeah, yeah. A um, lot of pe- lots of people saying they want another say, even though yeah. even though they don't, they might not, they might not want to remain, but they want another say now that they yeah. know more. So yeah. there is, um, yeah, there is definitely a lot more. There's, you can see, it, there's a lot more interest in the EU. There's a lot more interest in the way the UK constitution works. So it has. One of the good things about Brexit is um, people are now interested in um, the legal side of it, I guess, the process yeah, of it yeah. all, what it all yeah. means. Yeah, which is what you're trying to get across. You're trying to, you're trying to emphasize the legal side of it, aren't you? Well, yeah, know. I was, I, I just write, I just write a few articles um, about, here's what we have at the moment. So, I don't know, um, typical one is roaming charges. That's done by, an, an, you know, a nice EU regulation that makes the um you know phone providers not charge you roaming once we go and let's say no deal once we go there's nothing stopping the uh the uh, mobile operators charging you whereas yeah. while we're in it's you know automatic protection right there yeah yeah what, what's 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 the most surprising thing you found out with, um since, you, since you've been involved in this on the legal side what's the most i'm going to put you on the spot now what would you say was the, the thing that you thought oh my god no way I can't believe that. Uh, I think definitely. Let me just oh, let me just have a look. I've got them all noted down somewhere. <laughs> I think one of them was definitely. Um, oh, just it's it, it's not a massive one, but it's something you'd ra- it's something you'd like to be there rather than not be there. So, for example, um, you're going abroad. And let's say you have some kind of emergency or there's some kind of disaster and you don't have any, you don't have, there's no British representation in the country, like, you know, a consular or embassy. You have no, no representation to flee to. You as an EU citizen can go to, say, the Danish or the Austrian or whatever, the Polish embassy, and they have to treat you as if they're one, as if you're one of their own. Yeah. I thought that's one of those small little things that, um, that we, that we benefit from. I can't remember yeah. what the art. I can't remember which article it is, but it's just one of those. And then there's um, a, it was a really difficult one to research, but it's a it's these bilateral bilateral investors agreements. Um, I was speaking to Jason Hunter about them, um, and he pointed me in the right direction of it. So we're looking at these um, agreements that, um, like say for example, someone in Colum- you know, investors in Colombia have in the UK. Now they can they've invested money or a lot investors like the Japanese or whatever have invested money into the UK because the UK went around promoting itself saying yeah we're the we're really business friendly also we're in the single market yeah. invest here invest here um, but so we can exp- so so the now these um, now that we're now we seem to be leaving everything at some point hopefully not. Um, their interest is now being really, really potentially, you know, harmed, which means they could probably probably sue the UK government. Oh, why? Because we're we're changing the playing field. We're because yeah, we've uh, they have a they have a, like a legitimate expectation of what to expect when they made their investment, and you know, they yeah, didn't, yeah. Um, but you know, that's it. It might never happen. You know, it's just one of those things that just really was interesting. It's like, wow, this could yeah. be a thing. I think that's. Definitely- I think. So like you see, it's one of those things, but there's so many things that, that there's so many little things that people maybe 
It's just, just simply ton, tons cannot, of little things. Could could never have thought about or could never have um, conceived. Um, and it's only when you start unraveling something as complex as our, um, you know, our, our situation in the European Union, and you start thinking, "Oh my God, this is well, this, 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 this." this. Well, the, the, one of the, one of my first articles was about property ownership. I mean, I know it's you know it's not like it's, it's not everyone's problem, like for example, but I thought it was quite an interesting area to write about. Like yeah. you know, you go off, you go off to France, and, you know, so many people, Brexiters, Remainers, whatever. Lots of people have a holiday home in another country. Yeah. And you buy that property as an EU citizen, which means you can expect to be treated the same as yeah. a citizen of the country you're buying in. Once, yeah. once, um, once we lose our EU citizenship status, like, you know, we become third country nationals, we lose that automatic legal protection that we have under EU law. Yeah. Which means, you know, that, you, know we, you could be slapped with a foreign investors tax or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You're not protected. That's the yeah. big sad thing about Brexit. We're losing our EU citizenship and all the rights and protections we get with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that is that's one of the things that probably motivates me the most. Actually, is, is that so? I've lived always as a citizen of the European Union. Now, pe people, I can almost see the comments that are going to come up um, on the video. Saying, ah, oh, <laughs> you're not a EU citizen. That doesn't exist. There's no such thing oh, as EU I, citizenship. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what you've um, got to do in that situation, what you've got to do is you've got to say, well, look at Article what twenty of the Article twenty of. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> the Treaty of the European Union, the Treaty of the Function. I always forget which one it is. And just say, yeah. here is your citizenship rights because they're yeah. additional to your national citizenship. So they're there. It does exist. Yeah. yeah. When you're out, but, they yeah. don't apply. I, I, I totally agree, and um, but the, the point is that we, we've grown up, we've been afforded all these rights, all these opportunities, um, yeah. and what people are effectively doing is they're stripping those away, not only from us, but from future generations as well, yeah. which, which I think is actually... Um, one of the saddest you know, things. Is that right? <laughs> it's really sad. Hold on, I just can't hear you a bit. Let me just put my other headphone in. Okay. There we go, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's one of the I, saddest things. I, Something yeah. so normal being stripped away from us. Yeah. And um, I think maybe, I don't understand why people don't really understand this, but uh, maybe they don't see these things as being important. But clearly there's millions and millions of people that think they are important. And, and that is where, that's why there's so much anger, I think, really. Uh, I think, um, I think uh, generally there wasn't really, the problem is, um, and we, 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 at the beginning, you know, the EU is quite a comp complex thing and you don't really think about it. Um, so there was there was a problem that we, there was a severe lack of interest in the legal side of the EU. Yeah. And just meaning what what kind of system is in place that we benefit from. So the framework that exists that we all benefit yeah. from. And now what Brexit has highlighted is that whole framework to us looking at it now it's like wow we're losing a lot yeah no, just taken absolutely. away <laughs> but we're 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 fine for a people's vote that's the that's the thing and anybody that's watching this anybody that agrees with us you need to you need to keep lobbying your mp you need to keep writing to them you need to yes. email them tweet them keep um keep the pressure up um i think just email you know, them once, every day email them every day just say look this is you know this was promised we're promised the exact same benefits this doesn't deliver that. I yeah. think we need another say. It's not unreasonable. I, you know, you just got to think about unreasonable. You know when, you know when you close Netflix or whatever, it says, "Are you sure you want to leave Netflix?" Something so trivial. We're about to make a huge constitutional change to the UK. Are yeah. you? Is it? Oh, it's not, there's, there's nothing unreasonable about saying, "Are you sure you want to do that?" Yeah, absolutely. And it's if people are sure, simple. <laughs> if people are sure, they'll vote for it. If they, yeah. if the, if. Will of the people, I hate that term. I hate that term. But oh, if the yeah, will I hate of the that people, term. Um, then, um, then you know that's that's democracy. I think, um, Jill, that's amazing. I think um, I think it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be very interesting. See... Keep an eye out on the two cases. Yeah, and I think at the moment we we can say safely say that the withdrawal agreement is universally hated, pretty much. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah. whether this get through Parliament or not is um, it's looking 
Yeah, it's, it's looking very unlikely at the moment, but uh, we'll see. Joel, thank you ever so much. And um, what's your um, what's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Joel Bacchus. That's J O E L B A C C A S. Nice and easy to find. Excellent. I'll um, I'll make sure it goes up on the um, on the video credits anyway. So thanks a lot, Joel. Yeah. Thank you very much.